There is no devil. The devil is the police. That's why we call them beasts. The slums of Nairobi, dead bodies of young poor men, are turning up on the streets almost every day. It's an underground war against crime. The community, experts and insiders say they are executed by the police, without charges, without trial, because they are allegedly criminals. One of them was Brian. This is his story. Alikuwa mpole na mtu wa kufurahia, mtu wa kumake fans. Mama Brio has lost her son. Brian, 19 years old, executed while having lunch. It's been two days and it still all feels like a terrible nightmare. Hey, I like the pictures so much. Hmm? This is where Brian was sleeping just a few days ago. The police suspected him of being a criminal, a thief, but Mama Brayo says he was innocent. Youth. Brian had aspired to become a reggae artist. It's day four after Brian's death. Mama Brian has to go to the city mortuary for his autopsy. Filming is officially forbidden. The smell is pungent. 20 to 50 corpses arrive here every day, almost all killed by police. For Mama Brio, it's still all surreal. Joyce was Brian's friend and neighbor. Here in her community in Kayole is where he was killed. Joyce says he was executed in broad daylight along with his three friends. So, we ran towards this way, and we found that our four boys were killed here. One was lying here, here, and the other three were inside. I heard they came to cook lunch and they were gunned down. The policeman was the one who gunned them down. Can you enter? The community is still shocked about what they say was a brutal execution by a police killer squad. Three of the men died in here. The family has burned everything so that the rooms can be empty. Back home, Joyce shows us another chilling piece of evidence. The images of Brian and his dead friends broadcast on Dandora Crime Free, one of the many Facebook pages that support extrajudicial killings. Joyce says the police themselves post the pictures to instill fear and label the victims as armed, violent criminals. I saw they were my friends, like brothers to me. Yeah. And it hurt me a lot. Here in the slum, the community says the police are slaughtering an entire generation. That's why we always keep quiet. There are so many guys who have been killed, but we can't, we can't say anything. Yeah. The independent medical legal unit IMLU in Nairobi. Dr. Brian Bichanga is a forensic expert. For him, cases like Brian's are part of a larger pattern. Being poor in Kenya is, is almost a death sentence. 
you're more likely to die from the police than from the criminals. The whole scenario where there's a lot of crime, the police are trying to fight crime, that gives you a, a, a recipe for, for some of these extrajudicial killings. The executed are overwhelmingly young men, and they are poor, like Brian. The police call them criminals. The police claim the victims were caught stealing or attacking their officers, but for Dr. Bichanga, the corpses tell a different story. Entry wounds to the, to, the, to the back, entry wounds to the head, entry wounds to the chest. The main objective of, of anyone who's trying to shoot you in the back, in the head, and in the chest is not to, to immobilize you, it's to execute you. We reached out to the Office of the Inspector General for an interview several times. We also contacted IPOA, the police's independent oversight authority, for an official statement. Both repeatedly denied DW requests for interviews in person. One officer inside the system, however, is willing to uncover the doings of Nairobi's police, but only anonymously. He fears he would otherwise be killed as well. He wants to be called modern cop and says he's against extrajudicial killings like that of Brian. Extrajudicial killings happen almost every other day. Everybody knows that there are extrajudicial killings. It's impossible to give the exact figures, but modern cop guesses about 10 people are executed in Nairobi slums every day. That would make it more than 3,500 police murders per year. So the procedure is, as a cop, you're given an order. You don't know where the order comes from. You're told, hey, this is what's happening. And now it's time to shoot, to kill. And then you go, you land. Within that process, if you don't get the right guy, you'll end up killing the wrong guy. And if you get the right guy, you also kill the right guy without prosecution, and nobody cares. For many police, the otherwise vibrant life in the slum is deemed worthless. Outside the affected neighborhoods in the rest of the country, most killings are not reported or are downplayed. Crime is rife, the prisons are full, and no one remembers how the extrajudicial killing started in the first place. Modern Cop explains the truth behind the posted photos of dead corpses. He says that firearms are placed next to the victims by the police to show they were armed. I see the gun, the bullet. You will have to at least find a way to place a fake pistol and retaliate and say that the guy was also armed. You go do your thing. But at the end of the day, the concept is you must make the police look good, however bad it is. So having fake guns on criminals, that's true. The police insist their victims, including Brian, are all criminals. And a friend of Brian says, yes, they were in a gang, but those times are long over. They gave up crime and even surrendered to the police last year. To conceal his identity, we'll call him Amos. They shouldn't have killed Brian. We had changed for real, for real. If there's an investigation, they should do their investigation. Isn't that right? There are jails. Who were they built for? Dead bodies? Are dead bodies taken to jail? Amos is but one example of a former criminal who now lives with a target on his back, despite pursuing a life of reform. Fear and censorship mute all official counts of extrajudicial killings. Local media reports, as of August 2017, that the latest number of police executions is a little over 100 in one year. In one year, 100 people only? 
There's nothing like that. A hundred people are dying within three days. One hundred people are dead within three days. Amos has lost his friend Brian and says he knows the police will come for him next. I'm the one on their hit list now. I'm not fearful because it's gotten to the point where they even kill innocent people. The day I die is the day I will be happy because I will no longer have to suffer these struggles. But my prayer to God is that I do not die before the truth is told. It's day 15 since Brian's death. His mother, his family and friends lay him to rest in his rural area. They lament that Brian, like so many other young men, was stripped of judicial process and his human rights, his life and death devalued. Thousands of extrajudicial killings in Kenya have been covered up and unreported, personal tragedies hidden beneath the guise of police success. It's a sad certainty that Brian wasn't the last young man they'll bury in Nairobi, Kenya.